Uh, hi everybody, I am Dr. Armen, Professor Armen Astvatsatrian from Yerevan, Armenia, and today I will talk about acute bronchitis. So, uh, bronchitis, yeah, what is acute bronchitis? I am, once again, I am Dr. Armen, Professor Armen Astvatsatrian from you, Dr. Y, I know it's, my name is unpronounceable. So, let's talk about bronchitis. What is acute bronchitis? Acute bronchitis is the inflammation of the tracheobronchial tree. So, a tracheobronchial, uh, tracheo, tracheobronchial tree commonly following an upper respiratory infection that occurs in patients without chronic lung disorders. The cause is almost always a viral infection. So, can we talk, can say we make equal viral infection and acute bronchitis? The pathogen is rarely identified. The most common symptom is a cough with or without fever, and possibly a sputum production. Diagnosis is based on a clinical findings. Treatment is uh, supportive. Uh, antibiotics are usually unnecessary. unnecessary. Prognosis is excellent. Acute bronchitis is frequently of a, a frequently component of upper respiratory infection caused by rhinovirus, parainfluenza, influenza A or B virus, respiratory syncytial uh, uh, virus, coronavirus, or human met metapneumovirus virus. Metapneumovirus. Metapneumovirus, actually. <laughs> uh, bacteria such as mycoplas mycoplasma pneumonia, bordetella pertussis, and chlamydia pneumonia cause less than 5% of cases. These sometimes occur in outbreaks. Uh, acute bronchitis is a part of the spectrum of illness that occurs with SARS-CoV-2 infection and testing for this virus is appropriate in the current pandemic, but not with PCR, please. Huh? Fever, myalgia, sore throat, gastrointestinal uh, symptoms and loss of smell and taste are more common with so-called SARS-CoV-2 virus than others. Very questionable. Huh? Very questionable. Acute inflammation of the tracheobronchial tree in patients with underlying chronic bronchial disorder, for example, asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COIPD, bronchioctasis, uh, cystic fibrosis is con considered uh, an acute exacerbation of the disorder. Uh, the, rather than acute bronchitis. In these patients, the etiology, treatment, and outcome differ from those of acute bronchitis. So once again, acute cough in patients with asthma, COIPD, obstructive pulmonary disease, bronchiectasis, bronchiectasis, or cystic fibrosis should typically be considered an exacerbation of the disorder rather than simple acute bronchitis. Okay? So, symptoms are a non-productive or mildly productive cough accompanied or pre uh, preceded by urine, uh, urei, uh, upper respiratory infection. Symptoms usually by more than five days. Subjective, subjective dyspnea results from chest pain or tightness with breathing. Not, not from hypoxia. Signs are often absent, absent, but may include a scattered ronchi uh, and a wheezing. So, uh, previous lecture was wheezing, right? So, I give you a link for this also. Huh? Wheezing, yeah. Uh, sputum may be clear, purulent, or occasionally contain uh, streaks of blood. Streaks, <laughs> streaks, streaks of blood. Sputum characteristics do not uh, correspond with a particular etiology. For example, uh, for example, yeah, for example, uh, uh, viral. That is viral versus bacterial. 
once again, uh, this uh, sentence is very uh, of great importance. Sputum characteristics do not correspond with a particular etiology that is viral versus bacterial. Mild fever may be present, but high or prolonged fever is usually uh, a fever is unusual. It suggests influenza and pneumonia. Huh? Mild fever may be present in acute bronchitis, but high or prolonged fever is unusual and suggests influenza or pneumonia. On the resolution, cough is the last symptom to subside and often takes two or three weeks or even longer to do so. But don't be scared for that. <laughs> okay, let's about diagnosis. So, of course, diagnosis is a clinical evaluation. Sometimes check straight to exclude other disorders. Diagnosis is based on cl clinical presentation. Microbiologic testing is usually unnecessary. However, with uh, patients with signs or symptoms of COVID-19 in the current pandemic should be tested for SARS-CoV-2, but not with PCR, uh, please. Diagnostic, diagnostic testing for influenza and pertussis should also be considered if there is a high clinical suspicion uh, on exposure or and or clinical features. Chest, uh, patients who complain of dyspnea Patients who complain with dyspnea should have pulse oximetry to rule out hypoxemia. Chest, chest X-ray is done if findings suggest serious illness or pneumonia. For example, ill, Ill appearance, mental status change, high fever, tachypnea, hypoxemia, crackles, signs of consolidation or pleural effusion. Older patients that are the occasional exception as they may have a pneumonia without fever and auscultatory findings presenting instead with altered mental status and tachypnea. Sputum gram stain and culture usually have no role. Nasopharyngeal samples can be tested for influenza and pertussis. If these disorders are clinically suspected, example, for, for example, for pertussis persistent or paroxysmal cough after 10 to 40 days of illness, only sometimes with a characteristic whoop and or retching, exposure to a confirmed case. A viral panels testing is not usually recommended because results do not affect treatment. Cough resolves within two weeks in 75% uh, of patients. Patients with persistent cough should undergo a chest X-ray, no computer tomography. The decision to evaluate for non-infectious causes, including asthma, postnasal drip, and gastro, uh, postnasal drip, and gastroesophageal, gastroesophageal reflux disease, reflux, can usually be made on the basis of uh, the clinical presentations. Differentiation of cough variant asthma may require pulmonary functioning testing. <sighs> Treatment of acute bronchitis, bronchitis. Symptoms relief, for example, acetaminophen, hydration, possibly antitussives. Inhaled beta agonist for wheezing. Oh, wheezing, yeah, I, for wheezing. Acute bronchitis in otherwise healthy patients is a major cause of antibiotic overuse. Nearly all patients require only symptomatic treatments such as acetaminophen and hydration. Evidence supporting efficacy of routine use of... I'm sorry, huh? So, evidence support efficacy of routine use of other symptomatic treatments such as antitussive mycolytics and bronchodilators is weak. Antitussives should be considered only if the cough is distressing or interfering with sleep. Patients with wheezing may benefit from inhaled beta-2 agonists, for example, albuterol, for a few days. Broader use of beta-2 agonists is not recommended because adverse effects such as tremor, nervousness and shaking are common. Uh, though some studies have shown more than modest symptomatic benefits with antibiotic use in acute bronchitis, the low incidence of bacterial causation, self-limiting nature of acute bronchitis, and the risk of adverse effects and antibiotic resistance are against widespread antibiotic use. 
Oral antibiotics are typically not used except in patients with pertussis or during known outbreaks of bacterial infection, mycoplasma, chlamydia. Uh, Macrolides such as azithromycin, 500 mg orally once, then 250 mg orally once a day for four days of claritromycin, 500 mg orally twice a day for uh, seven days is uh, the preferred choice. So the most cause, once again, of acute bronchitis is healthy patients without using antibiotics. Okay, so once again, acute bronchitis is viral in more than 95% of all cases, often part of an upper respiratory infection, diagnose acute bronchitis mainly by clinical evaluation, so do chest, x-ray, and or other tests only in patients who have manifestation of more serious illness, and the treat, most, uh, treat most patients only to relieve symptoms. But don't touch patients. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in conclusion, thanks for your attention. Uh, ju just all, uh, th that's all concerning acute bronchitis. Actually, there is nothing more worse to say. Uh, thanks for your attention. Don't forget to put ring on and subscribe. And uh, in our YouTube channel, Dr. Y. So, it me, it's Dr. Y. Huh? Or in podcast, Dr. Y. And uh, don't forget to make your donations. It will be highly appreciated. How to make your donations? You will see in description of this video. Bye and see you in another lectures.